The table of drugs and chemicals lists the ICD-10-CM codes associated with the effects of certain substances. This can include things like you took a new medication and it made you sick to your stomach, or a child who accidentally ingested laundry detergent. It's one of those three tables that we have in ICD-10-CM, the table of neoplasms, drugs and chemicals, and our external causes. Now, if you're interested in the other tables, I already made a video on the table of neoplasms. You can definitely check that out with the card over here. And I will be making one on the external causes as well. Today, we're gonna to go over the table of drugs and chemicals. By the way, I'm Victoria Mole. I'm a medical coder, auditor, educator, and content creator. And on my channel, I provide tips, tricks, and tutorials to help you be successful in a medical coding career. Hey, if you haven't already, I would highly encourage you to subscribe and hit that notification bell so that you can get alerts when I post all kinds of great content just like this. Now, one of the interesting differences between the table of drugs and chemicals versus the table of neoplasms is if you remember from the neoplasm video, there was a short instruction at the top of the table telling you how to use that table. Well, we don't have that actually in the table of drugs and chemicals. There's no really instructions on how to use the table. Now, in my version of the ICD-10-CM manual, my table of drugs and chemicals is even smaller than my table of neoplasms. But you can see here that we have one, two, three, four, five, six different columns here. So this first column here is poisoning accidental, meaning it's unintentional. So that would be something that we would use for when a child looks at a Tide Pod and they think it's a piece of candy and they accidentally poison themselves by eating it. Next column, we have poisoning intentional self-harm. So this would be someone who maybe overdosed on their medication in an attempt to harm themselves or commit suicide. Then we have poisoning assault. So an example of this would be a woman is at a bar, she's having a drink and her drink is spiked with quaaludes. We would go to the poisoning assault column and we would find quaaludes alphabetically and find the code that way. It would be under quaaludes and then it would be under this column poisoning assault. We would follow it over that way. Then we have poisoning undetermined and that you might see if the documentation just says poisoning but doesn't specify how that patient was poisoned, if someone else administered that medication, if they were intentionally trying to hurt themselves, if they accidentally ingested it. So it's not uncommon to use that poisoning undetermined because the documentation doesn't specify the circumstances that surrounded that poisoning. So an adverse effect is when you have a substance or medication that you are using appropriately, but you have an adverse effect to it. For example, you try a new laundry detergent and you break out in hives, that would be an adverse effect. Or again, you take a medication, you take the appropriate dosage of it, you take it as prescribed, but it makes you uh, have hallucinations, that would be an adverse effect. Now, I should probably also mention that in those circumstances where you have a patient who took a medication and now they're having hallucinations, the coding sequencing here, the hallucination would get coded first and then that code for the adverse effect. And then we have underdosing. So the patient took the right medication, but they did not take the full dosage of it that they were supposed to. And remember, this is drugs and chemicals. So even things like bleach are within the table of drugs and chemicals. And again, there's a dash here because you wouldn't be prescribing it. So there would be no underdosing of a patient uh, with bleach. Same thing with coffee. You will find coffee on the table of drugs and chemicals. I actually have a t-shirt inspired by this particular code. You can find that on the store for the YouTube channel or at contempocoding.com. But yeah, so we do have codes for intentional poisoning of yourself with coffee. So let's do a couple of examples. Say a patient has acetaminophen and they have accidentally poisoned themselves. Maybe they thought they were a different type of medication or they thought they were a breath mint and they accidentally uh, took too much acetaminophen and now we have a accidental poisoning with acetaminophen. So you're gonna need to get out your ruler, especially if you have the same version I do because this print is teeny, teeny, tiny. So we're gonna go down to alphabetically acetaminophen. So here is our acetaminophen and we're at our first column here. Oh my gosh, this is teeny, teeny, tiny, tiny print. Acetaminophen and here is our column for our accidental poisoning, unintentional. And this is T39.1X1. Now, what did I say it says in the guidelines? We can't code directly from the table of drugs and chemicals. We have to check this in our tabular list. 
So here is our T391X1, but what does this tell us? We need a seventh character. So this is another way that the table of drugs and chemicals differs from the table of neoplasms. If you remember the table of neoplasms, if it needed an additional character, there was a dash at the end of the code. We didn't see that in the table of drugs and chemicals. It, when we looked up the code though in the, alpha, in the tabular list, it told us though that we need a seventh character. So when we're looking for a seventh character, I'm guessing these are probably gonna be our ASDs, right? But we can flip back to find out. So if we look, start looking back, start looking back, start looking back, here we go. The appropriate seventh character is to be added to each code from category T39. Is it A, initial encounter, D, subsequent, or S for sequela? So this initial subsequent is different than like our inpatient hospitals where it's initial is that admission and subsequent is every visit after the admission until discharge. Um, this is initial is they're still receiving active treatment versus subsequent is when they're in their healing phase. So if this, we're going to assume all of these are, they're still active. They're being actively treated for these. So we're at our T391X1 poisoning by, um, amino federal derivatives, accidental, unintentional, and we would add on our seventh character there. So in this case, we're going to say it's an A and that would be our final code. Let's do another practice. Patient intentionally overdoses on lithium. So that would fall under this column here, poisoning intentional self-harm. And we're gonna look for lithium in our L's. They are all alphabetic. So oh, I'm probably in the second column here. This follows the same as the neoplasm table. So here we start in this first column and then we move to this next column alphabetically. So lithium is gonna be over here. So here is our lithium. We're in the second column for our intentional poisoning, T56.892. If you look this up in the tabular list, it's gonna tell you the same thing, that you need a seventh character for A, D, or S for initial subsequent sequela. So here it is, toxic effects of other metals, intentional self-harm, T56892, and again, seventh character. So we follow back to find out where our directory is. It's all the way back over on the other page for our T56, initial subsequent sequela. So we're gonna assume this is an A for initial. Now my version has a directory of what's on this page here as well as here. So it says it's laxative, not elsewhere classified through ludosilol. So now let's say a patient is going in for their flu vaccine and they develop hives as an adverse effect. So that would be where, that would be our adverse effect. They're taking it as administered. It was given appropriately, but they had a reaction to it. They had hives. So what would be the external cause code that we would use for that? So we would start with I for influenza. So here is our influenza vaccine now. It was administered correctly. They just had a reaction to it. They broke out in hives. So we have to know that that is our adverse effect. So that's that column here. We follow it all the way down. So here is our influenza vaccine. And you have to be very careful because again, with that tiny print, you could almost, almost miss it. So I'm gonna zoom you guys in here so you can see this just a little bit clearer. But these, they kind of looked like eights, but they're not, they're Bs. So the code here for the adverse effect is actually t 50 b 95 not eight, but you could easily mistake that for an eight, right? So T50B95. So T50B95, adverse effects of other viral vaccine, and it needs the seventh character. So in this case, we're gonna say again that it's an initial, so it's an A. Mm -hmm. Now, if we have a patient who's on Synthroid and they're having trouble affording their medication, so they, they say, hey, I'm gonna cut my pills in half, that would also fall under that category of underdosing. So we would go to our medication, our Synthroid, which is to use sin. Oh, here it's all the way at the bottom. Synthroid, we'd go to our uh, underdosing, which is our very last column all the way here to the right, T38.1X6. And again, you would double check that code in the tabular list. And then last, let's say we just got a chart and it says um, nutmeg oil poisoning. And it doesn't say, was it intentional? Was it not intentional? You know, maybe it's a subsequent hospital visit and they're not writing a lot. They're not copying things over. It just says nutmeg oil poisoning. In that case, we're, we're it's kind of like an unspecified type of thing, right? And that falls under what category? The poisoning undetermined, which is the one that is the fourth from the right. So we're gonna have here our nutmeg oil, 
we're gonna go fourth, one, two, three, four, and then that would be the code that we would double check in our tabular list to verify that we need that additional character extension. So that's it for the table of drugs and chemicals. Next, I will be covering the table of external causes of injury. And I bet you guys can help me think of some really interesting codes that we could look up for that one as well. If you have suggestions for videos, I would love to hear them. Leave them for me in the comments below. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video. And until then, just keep on coding on.